Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek with your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's roundtable podcast, we don't have all the usual suspects. We have a few of the usual suspects. We have the technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you and how is the Traeger treating you? I'm well. The Traeger's just fine. I thought you were going to say you had the most important people here today, but I guess, you know, it's all good. I mean, I'm just, I don't want to start a controversy, but we do have someone very important. And it is Tria putting in the reps, Harris. Tria, how are you? Back from the Caribbean, the Lesser Antilles. I am great. Good to see you. Rested and relaxed. How's the Traeger treating you? Well, we like our Traeger. Okay, great, <laughs> yeah. great. I love it when you call me Big Papa, Tate Litchfield. Tate, how's the Traeger treating you? It's good, man. It's putting in the work. <laughs> today's podcast is not sponsored by Traeger, but we have a special guest today. And I love when we have these podcasts with our special guest, Luke Harris. Luke, welcome. Thank you. So, Luke, can you kind of rewind the tape, let the listeners know how you found us and your journey through land investing and what you've accomplished so far? Yeah, gosh, Um, because it it actually started uh, with a Google search and your name came up on the Google search. Uh, and your, I think it was like three tips for land investing or, or something, or three tips about what to know. I don't remember exactly. Um, in three fatal 20, land investing mistakes. That's what it was. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, it was 2016, I believe it was, right around uh, the new year. So like Jan- in early January 20, was it 15 or 16? I think it was 2016. Um and so I watched your, some of your YouTube videos and then um, I think I started doing it uh, with another educator a little bit later on, kind of bounced around for a couple of years. And then um, when did I start the coaching? Was that 2018 with you guys? Yeah. It, was. 2018. it was like a couple of years later. And I, I don't know, I was doing deals. I think I did uh, 40, like my first full year. And then, um, so that would have been 2017. And then, yeah, I think it was 2018, probably around June, July, I started talking to um, Mike and uh, Scott Bossman. Um, And, uh, you know, I've watched a lot of your stuff. I listened to all your podcasts and, um, and ended up just going all in and pulling the trigger on coaching. And of course did the, um, you know, boot camp and stuff before that. Um, so I kind of had a little experience under my belt before I really dived in with all of your training, but, uh, so that was 2018. And then I think I started coaching in September, October that year. Um, and like I said, I think I did, yes, yeah, six, four, 40 deals in 2017. I think I ended up doing like 60, some maybe 70 in, um, in 2018. And then uh, so I started working with Tate late in 2018 there. And then right about um, at the end of the year there, things just really started taking off with several months of coaching under my belt um, and working with Tate. And uh, that's really just when things really blew up for me. Um, and so can you define that, blow up? Yeah. So 20, what would that have been? 2019, I think it was like a hundred and. 90 some deals if i remember just can't remember just how under many 200 I, was it the, yeah okay um and then and they're mostly small deals honestly i probably should have um prioritized the larger deals more and done fewer bigger deals but i didn't um and then so that was 2019 and then 2020 i ended up doing over 500 um but they were still the really small deals and now i'm trying to finally trying to fewer deals and bigger deals. Um, but yeah, the, the coaching is really what made things blow up for me. Wow. So I know we have a lot of questions that we're going to have to, we're going to like, going to do like the grill, the geeks. Um, Eric, do you want to, you want to start? 
Yeah. Yeah. I'll start us off. Um, you know, Luke, in, in your kind of intro there, you, you said something that I, I think potentially a lot of our listeners will pick up on and, and wonder about. And you mentioned that, uh, that you'd done some other education outside of the land geek, um, at some point during the, the journey. Um, so what, what drew you to the land geek, our, our program versus, you know, some of the others or, you know, just kind of how did all that work out and, and why, what advice could you give to somebody that's, that's maybe confused about who to work with? Mm-hmm. Um, Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, all of the educational programs have value. And I think the reason things really blew up for me when I went with you guys is uh, the coaching and the one-on-one aspect of it. And that's when I actually, I think those were the very first live events I went to too. So I kind of just dove all in. I went to all the boot camps during coaching. I was doing my calls with Tate. Um, and, you know, there's a certain level of accountability that happens there. And just all the, the questions that came up got answered instantly. There wasn't like tons of digging that had to happen. And me spending a ton of money before I got them solved, I kind of got the, the answers straight from the pros. And um, yeah, I think, it, I mean, you know, obviously we all know the coaching is expensive, um, but it was totally worth it for me. And it, I've made it back so many times over, but I think it was just the, that higher level of more intensity is what, um, what I was looking for and what you guys had and what made it work for me. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Taria Harris, what's your question for Luke? So Luke, I was wondering, I, I know sometimes when I get like a new coaching client and they want everything to happen overnight, right? They just, they want it to work. They want it to, can you talk about what helped you stay motivated during the times where things may not have been moving as quickly as you may have liked? Um, yeah. Uh, so my situation when I started coaching, um, I'm trying to remember when Oren was born, my first child, I don't think he was born yet at the beginning of coaching. No, maybe he was, I think he was born right before coaching, wasn't he? He was he was just a little guy. I yeah. think he was a couple months old, as if I recall correctly. Yeah. So my big, I had a big fire under my butt to basically <laughs> not have to travel. I was doing um, timber inventory work just all over the country. Tons of traveling. We lived in a little single wide trailer. Uh, you know, all that was a great experience, and I think character building for me. But um, I didn't want that for my family, and um, kind of had to come up with a better, um, you know, way of life where we didn't have to just always be on the road and where I could, you know, make a a good income, um, without traveling and also just have a better home to live in as well. So, um, I think that's really what was motivating me early on is to just, uh, you know, get out of that position that I was in. Did you have lulls in the business? Like, so times where, maybe you weren't getting as many responses to your mailers or maybe sales weren't, you know, rolling in the door every day. Did you have those moments when you, you know, throughout the process? Yeah. And, um, yeah, I feel like I did. Yeah. And, you know, I think a lot of it was, I feel like I've probably heard you guys say on the podcast and stuff too, but, um, you know, seeing, you know, Tate, Scott, Eric, all of you guys that had already kind of made it. uh, I knew if you guys could do it, I figured it would work for me too. So that was something I told myself a lot. Um, But yeah, I feel like there definitely were lulls and, you know, just end up pushing through and making it happen, I guess. Nice. Thank you. Uh, Yeah. I love that. Um, Because that's kind of like what Scott Todd would always say. He's like, well, if Podolsky can do it, it can't be that hard, right? Um, and it's true, right? It's it's a simple model. It's just not easy. There's lots of moving parts to it. But I think at the end of the day, you just have to have grit and and just keep going. And it, it eventually 
you get there. Like I always say, like your success in this business is inevitable. It's just when it happens, we don't know. But if you just keep going, it's inevitable. Um, Tate, big papa, your 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 protege. Yeah. No, it's you know I'm always excited to to catch back up with Luke and. Uh, you know, fortunately I've been able to work with him continuously since he's graduated from the co- coaching program. So it's, it's been a lot of fun to, to see him grow. And I saw him coming to the business as, you know, this guy who had this burning desire to basically be able to make a living and support his family in a life in a lifestyle that he wanted. And it's, it's really, truly inspiring to see somebody who not only achieved that, but is truly living the dream. Right. I mean, he's doing it, man. And I'm, I'm proud of you. That's incredible. So my hat goes off to you, but there's been a sacrifice, right? You've worked really, really hard and you've stayed focused and, um, you've kept the blinders on. And, and that's one of the biggest thing that kind of gets in the way of other people's successes. They get sidetracked they, and they don't commit all the way. They don't burn those bridges. And, uh, you did that and now you're reaping the rewards. So my question for you is an easy one. I got two actually, uh, the first one that I think a lot of people would be curious to know about is you did 500 deals. How many properties do you have an in inventory roughly at any given time? Like what, what's the magic number for Luke Harris? Um, yeah. So I went into the year basically just buying as much as I possibly could. And I guess the short answer answer is it fluctuated a lot, but, right. um, but I was, starting the year, I was just buying a ton wholesale. That's how I think I only bought 165 or something through mailers, if I remember correctly. Um, okay. And the rest of them I bought wholesale. Um, and at, I think I was doing 20, 30 a month at the beginning of the year and then COVID hit. And that's when things really blew up. I don't know what, I'm sure probably the same for you guys, but um, yeah like doubled my sales. Um, and I, I was positioned perfectly. I think I ended up having 150 properties ish in inventory at that time. So that's what allowed me to have, um, you know, so many sales so quickly is the, the inventory, but, um, yeah, I think, and I have kind of changed my model where I'm doing bigger deals and fewer of them. So that number is kind of changing. Um, but yeah, bit, yeah. Like right now I'm at like, Actually, I don't think I only have like 20 or 30 that I actually own. I just have a lot under contract. And then, yeah, I think when I was doing the 500, doing that model, like 100 was about what I was kind of at a lot of the time. Yeah, it's interesting because that carrying capacity, you know, there is a sweet spot. We talk about it all the time. Like, you know, having just one property or two properties or five property, it's it's hard to really get the results that you want. So that's really cool. And I guess the second question I'd have for you is, Tell us about uh, one of your more memorable sales that you've had. What, what was one of those sales that just kind of is near and dear to your heart? Doesn't have to be your biggest sale. Doesn't have to be the best property, but what's one that you remember and why? Uh huh. Um. Yeah, that's a tough question. Uh, let me think here. Is you're probably so, at a point now okay. where like deals are all you know, like deals happen and they don't really mean as much, right? Because you got the team in place, but like, there's got to be one. Yeah, no, I, I can think of a specific one. Sorry. Um, there, so it's actually a specific buyer. Um, and I won't mention his name. I don't like even remember if I wanted to, but um, he actually bought a property from us very early on, uh, probably like 2017 or something. He bought it on terms. I, I sold it to him way too cheap. It was like a five acre property in uh, no. Lake County, Oregon. Uh, I'm sure some of you know that County. Um, and I sold it for $50 a month. <laughs> I think, I mean, it was back when you could get deals a lot cheaper. Um, and he defaulted on it after like two or three months or something. He just wouldn't pay. He was super flaky. Um, and then he, you know, he defaulted. He, he was nice about it. I don't remember what the exact scenario was. And then, um, then he popped back up maybe like six months or a year later. And he was like, Hey, it's me again. Uh, 
you know, I want to buy property from you. Is that okay? I know I defaulted last time. I was like, sure, whatever, you know, um, if you don't pay, I'll just foreclose on you. And uh, so he ended up buying two or three more properties from me. And this has been two or three years ago. And he sends me pictures of, he built like this little cabin on it. it uh, so he bought like at least two Humboldt County, Nevada forties from me. And he, every six months or so, I'll get an email or a text message with pictures of his little compound he's building. And he's got like a tiny house and like, he just loves it out there. And he makes his payments perfectly every single month. Um, so it kind of makes you feel good when you can provide a, a service for people that really love what you're offering. And he's definitely yeah. involved in that category. I mean, that gives me like the warm and fuzzies because often, you know, people will say, uh, you're not selling anything good. And it's like, ah, beauty's in the eye of the beholder, right? And a lot of the people that we work with aren't afraid of a little elbow grease, right? They're not afraid of hard work and and uh, putting in the, the time necessary to make a property what they envision it to be. So pretty cool to see that uh, not only are you building a business, but you are changing lives and helping people find their dream dream property. So good stuff, man. Yeah, that, that's so cool, Luke. So I've got a question, and I'm sure the listeners are wondering, to do that type of volume, how many VAs are you working with? And what are your favorite tools of the trade to manage that kind of volume? And how many hours a week are you working? Um, yeah, good question. So in 2020, to do the 500 deals, I was probably working. I did not have a salesperson for any of that. Um, I think I was working 20 to 30 hours a week doing the land business. Um, it was probably closer to 30. Uh, it was while I was building our house and everything. So it was kind of in the evenings and whatever. Um, and um, right now I have like 10 people ish, maybe a little bit more, 10 or 11. Uh, I don't think I had quite that many when I last year, when I was doing the 500, but I'm, like I said, I'm doing larger deals and fewer of them now. Um, yeah. I've got six local people and then two, four, six VAs right now. So um, what was the other question? Favorite okay. software tools, software and tools. Yeah. Uh, Podio is what like it's my crm it's my contact it's like my realtor bank for contacts my surveyor bank my it's got all my contacts in it um a lot of automate tons of automation i've got set up in there um of course all the you know the old go-to's like zapier and um i finally just set up like a you know a link where people can schedule calls with me with calendly um um Gosh, what are all the automated tools I'm using? Ring Central is my phone system that connects with a bunch of stuff. Uh, Trello, I use Trello a ton. Um, yeah, there's so many of them. Um, those are kind of the main. Honestly, I use like Google a lot, like uh, Google Sheets, Google Docs for my ads, um, Google Drive. Um, yeah. Any any, any love for Geekpack? Oh, yep. Yep. Yeah, actually. So, yeah, I can put in a little plug for Geek Pay. Uh, we actually, my, I have a, a loan servicer that works 20 hours a week now. Um, and that's all she does is the loan servicing. And um, so her quarterly goal earlier this year was um, to find the best loan servicing platform, basically. Um, and we ended up to make a long story short, we ended up settling with geek pay. <laughs> um, and I mean, we went all out like, uh, yeah, there's a bunch of other ones, but we were simple money is one we're using a lot that gets extremely expensive. Um, but for just a simple, like go to inexpensive loan servicing platform, that's what we've settled on for all of our notes now. So. Fantastic. How many, how many notes do you have now, Luke? 400 active ones right now. 
400. Wow. All right. I'm going to pass it off to Eric here. Um, and then we have one more question for you, Luke, and then, then we're going to have to go to the, put you on the spot for the tip of the week. Oh, geez. I didn't think I had that coming for something. <laughs> All right. So <clears throat> my next question would be, um, talk about, we all make mistakes in this business, big or small, but, um, you know, I would say they can always be resolved. So, so talk to us about maybe a mistake that, uh, that you made at some point in the land business and, and how it got resolved and, and what was the effect and so on. Um, gosh, there's so many of them. Uh, so yeah, I mean, one, I guess that I kind of revisit all the time, I guess is, um, is HOAs. My very first deal I lost money on, um, it was in North Carolina and it was in an HOA. Um, I think I paid $800 for the property. I actually closed it through a title company or an attorney. And I guess several lessons that I learned and, and then I ended up selling it. I think I actually sold it for like 1600 or something, but there was like the closing costs. And then there's, I think I paid an HOA fee for the year. Um, and I guess what I learned from that is it's hard, typically hard to sell properties with HOA fees and restrictions. And you got to watch out for the, uh, the fees. And I still do HOA deals sometimes, but I, I basically will only ever offer a flat $200 for them, but um, I've actually probably lost money on multiple HOA deals, which is kind of stupid for me to do, but um, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. Look, I got one last question before we go to the tip of the week. Uh -huh. How has the land business changed your life? Um, well, I, we were able to build our house uh, so we have a house now and basically the two big problems that, you know, kept the fire under my butt earlier on are now solved. Um, if I wanted to, I could, I could stick, I could probably downsize the team and work 10 hours or less a, a week if I wanted to, but I've chosen to grow it. Um, but basically I can, you know, I'm extremely location and, and time independent if I wanted to be, um, and uh, and we have a great home to live in now, uh, all because of the land business. So. Great, great. I, I assume your passive income exceeds your fixed expenses. Um, yes, the simple answer is yes. Yep, I'm blowing up the business, so yeah, I have a lot of expenses in the business, but yeah. All right, fantastic. Well, we're at that point now, Luke, and your mentorship has been fantastic but we're gonna ask you for a tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something else actionable for the Art of Passive Income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. But before you do that, we do have to talk about our sponsor, which is Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can literally change your life. Be like Luke Harris and start going up that mountain of land investing with a mentor who's done it thousands of times with Scott Todd, He'll take you up there quickly, safely, efficiently. Oh yeah, and that tuition investment for flight school is not gonna cost you nothing. Guaranteed you're gonna make back that money, 180 days or less, just show us your work. Learn more, go to landgeek.com forward slash training, but landgeek.com forward slash training. All right, Luke, what is your tip of the week? So I think I'm gonna go with a book. Uh, it's one I just finished recently by uh, well, actually, it's not by Dan Sullivan, but he is kind of the brain behind it. Um, it's called Who, Not How. Um, and basically, the idea behind it is, uh, you know, you find somebody uh, to solve your problem. You don't figure out how to do it yourself. And it simplifies your life and gives you freedom of time and whatnot. Great book. I totally missed that. My, my computer froze. Can you, can you say the book again? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Who, not how is the book. And it's, uh, I can't remember the guy that actually wrote it, but basically Dan Sullivan used a who to write the book for him. 
um, but he's kind of the brain behind it. Okay, great, great. Looks well, like <clears throat> Dan Sullivan and Benjamin Hardy. Yeah, Sandra. Benjamin Hardy's written some, some other really good books as well. Um, that book is like a classic though. Just, it's fantastic. Um, all right. Well, I want to thank the listeners, remind them the only way we're going to get Luke Harris back on the podcast is if you do us three favors, you got to follow, rate, review the podcast, send a screenshot of that review to support at the I'm going to send you the, what is now currently valued in crypto 1.2 million coins, a signed copy of dirt rich. So please do it. It really helps. Luke Harris, are we good? Yeah, this was fun. Thanks for having me on. Thanks so much. Eric, are we good? We're great. Taria? All good. Tate? Yeah, thanks for joining us, Luke. And uh, great work, man. Proud of you. Yeah, thanks. Luke, we're, we're so proud and um, so, we're so inspired, such an inspiration uh, to the community. And we have to get back at 1,000 deals next year. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, let's all do this. One, two, three. Let, let, let freedom, freedom bring. bring. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. My first time doing that. How'd it feel? Okay. Uh, good. It's fun. All right. A little <laughs> awkward. Was it yeah. a little awkward or no? <laughs> you can say it. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's awkward for us. <laughs> all right. Thanks, everybody. See you guys. Thanks. Thanks. See ya. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Are you ready to learn how you can start building a passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents? Schedule a free consultation at thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Let freedom ring.